And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some of our first impressions on the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Lost Judgment. This is the follow up to Judgment from 2019. It's from the people behind the incredibly awesome Yakuza games. It borrows a lot of elements, but it once again tries the more unique spin of instead being a, a criminal guy who beats people up, you're actually a detective guy who beats people up. And it's pretty sweet. It takes a slightly different approach to story compared to the original Judgment, but it's another cool entry that offers a slightly different flavor to the mainline Yakuza games. And so you know, we've been playing a review copy here, and this video is completely spoiler free. And the gameplay footage, of which I only captured the first few hours, not to spoil anything, uh, it was all captured on PS5. So in it, you play as Private Eye Detective Takeuchi Yagami, who at the start ventures out of his home base Kamurocho district over to Izazaki and Jicho, where some colleague friends of his from the previous game have set up their own private detective agency. Now, what starts as a simple investigation into widespread bullying at a high school it quickly develops into a much larger case involving a potential sexual assault, a really gruesome murder, and a lot of people to talk to and things to figure out. Now, if you didn't play the previous game, I think you'll do okay picking it up here. It's always the first thing that people ask me with any of the games from this studio. Uh, there, there are tons of returning characters, for sure, but the game does a pretty good job of cluing you into everything, and the actual investigation and the main story is mostly a completely new thing. And if you do just happen to dive right into this one, it's also just totally cool because it's actually really damn good. Now, the basic flow is what you'd expect if you've played any of these games. You walk around a not overly huge, but dense, and well-realized location based on real-world Japan. Uh, this time there are two regions, like I mentioned, there's Kamurocho and there's Izazaki. You talk to people, you engage in a lot of kind of detective style aspects of gameplay, searching for clues, asking people questions, using some of your tools, and of course, you fight a lot of dudes, engaging in really great brawler combat system. But of course, it's all so much more than that. You know, there's mini games, there's shops, there's places to eat to buff your character, hidden things to find, characters to discover, and just tons and tons of weird and quirky side quests. The main story keeps itself fairly serious with just nice dashes of absurdity here and there throughout. If you want the real weird and crazy stuff, and sometimes even more emotional stuff, you do the side quests where you catch, you know, yet another panty sniffer, you chat with weirdos, and you do some pretty cool mini games. Now, throughout the game, you can observe scenes and find clues to progress things in kind of like a first person view where you look through these scenes and kind of zoom in on things. You can use your camera to capture photo evidence. You can tail dudes through the streets at certain points and there's a little bit more to it this time around. And there's also stealth sequences throughout the main story. Uh, there's a few things to them, but I really didn't like the stealth parts. They're kind of awkward and kill the pace. But uh, you also now have a skateboard that you can throw down and get around town even faster. It works pretty similar to sprinting, and you can still get into random fights and do regular around town stuff, uh, but you can also do a couple of little skateboarding tricks too. Uh, there are different skateboards to collect with different surprises as well. Tak also has some cool gadgets. Uh, you still get to use the drone, but you also have a noise amplifier to find sound clues in the environment. Uh, you can also still do lock picking and wear disguises at certain points to get into places, but Tak can also get a Shiba Inu dog to help you find clues, which uh, is very good. I'd say 10 out of 10 game right here. This time around, there's a significant portion of the game centered around a high school. There are some plot moments here, and you actually beat the crap out of a lot of teens, which is kind of hilarious and weird, especially when they try to stab you with knives. But hey, whatever, man. Uh, once the game shifts sometimes away from the high school, you're free to still go back and visit it and engage with a lot. It's like a fully realized real world high school with multiple floors, buildings, facilities, a gymnasium, all that. And there are a bunch of side quests to engage in here at your leisure called school stories, which are actually pretty compelling activities that feel a cut above all the other random side quests you can get yourself into. And that's saying something. Two highlights of a few are the mystery club where you can become the advisor and there's a whole bunch of investigation stuff there. And there's a dance club where you can engage in dancing mini games, which are really a staple for games of this nature, but it's nice to see here and talks animations for it are incredible. Honestly, 
honestly, the amount going on with the high school is really impressive. The content offering is huge, but you gotta get out there and punch criminals out on the street too. Not just a bunch of weird cigarette kids. Combat, like last time, it takes a page from the Yakuza games, but it does its own thing a bit. You beat on dudes around you, sometimes grabbing objects in the environment and using them to your advantage. I can confirm that you can still kill a man with a bicycle, but you switch between fight styles, and this time around there are three. There's the crane style, which has crazy kicks and is good for crowd control. There's the tiger style that's good for one-on-one. -on -one. And the new snake style, which is absolutely my favorite by far. It focuses on a bit more on counters and defense, and you can also disarm dudes with it and do special attacks that scare the crap out of them. Combat is still really fun and a nice little deviation from Yakuza, especially with Takeuchi's mobility. He, his throws are cooler and his ability to do wall run attacks and stuff are so awesome and make burning that EX gauge that much better. Along with this, you're once again upgrading your character and upgrading your general abilities and your fight style moves, giving you more advantages like special knockdown hits, charged hits, Hits, more health, attack bonuses for when you're low on health, all that type of stuff. You spend experience to unlock these in a tree. Pretty standard video game fare, nothing too shocking, but all of it gets the job done. Now, part of the reason I personally love all the games from this studio is that, that there's just kind of a lot of everything. You know, it's a kitchen sink type game in terms of stuff you might like. Punching dudes in the street like a new 3D version of Streets of Rage, check. Uh, serious Japanese drama, really compelling, pretty much up there with the best stuff every single time, check. Mini games, down to the point of being able to play ported Master System games, check. Weird, absurd characters and situations, check. Just hours and hours and hours of gameplay, yep. Uh, a compelling main character? Yep, uh, it's all there. There's a lot to love, and that's why people love this subgenre, and I can never stop talking about it ever since I played Yakuza 0. The main character's actor, uh, Takuya Kimura, once again, does a great job. His presence and his voice is believable, despite him kind of looking too cool for any situation in the game. I mean, I play with Japanese voice acting with English subtitles, so I don't know for sure, but he seems awesome to me, uh, as does the rest of the supporting cast, you know, a few of which are prominent Japanese actors. Uh, Soma being a standout character, no spoilers. But if you want, there's also an English language setting available as well. Now, Lost Judgment at first might seem like more of the same, and structurally, like a lot of it might be, yeah. But it's also a massive step up in terms of storytelling. Yes, once again, you're not technically really solving crimes. You're kind of going through the motions. You're not actually putting all of the clues together all of the time, but that's a side thing really, because this ain't an Ace Attorney game. This is a drama, a story first and foremost with strong focus directing and writing. With the original game Judgment, I was like, okay, pretty cool. I guess it's cool that they're spinning off from Yakuza, but I don't know. But with Lost Judgment, it clicked so much more and it's pretty awesome. Again, it's not perfect. Sometimes there's pacing problems and some of the mini stuff and the side stuff with the uh, finding random crimes. Really, the whole explanation of it all slows the game down to a screeching halt. And like I said, not a fan of the stealth sequences. But otherwise, this is a damn good game. I'm really enjoying it. But of course, this is a before you buy. You guys probably know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Did you like the original game? Uh, do you like any of the games from this studio? Are you still a newcomer? Cause I'll always say start with Yakuza 0. That's the best starting place. But also, I mean, the judgment games are pretty great on their own as well. So I don't know. We definitely wanna hear what you're thinking about these games, about this genre down in the comments. Definitely hit us. Now, if this helped you out and maybe informed you a little bit, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us. Us out. But as always, man, I gotta say it, I mean it. Thank you guys for watching these videos so much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>